look who's back with another ration book recipes video and it's only been like we don't have to talk about it we're doing a little festive special today so i have picked some christmassy recipes um as always using genuine 1940s recipes kind of a mix of ministry of food pamphlets and vintage recipe books and they're all designed to be as cheap and accessible as possible under rationing and food shortages. Christmas was a pretty big deal under World War II, mostly because kind of most of the other national holidays had sort of quietly gone away. Um, summer holidays were cancelled because like, in the interest of productivity, um, there was no chocolate for Easter eggs. You couldn't set off fireworks during bonfire night because of the blackout, um, which is something that makes sense, but hadn't occurred to me until I read about it. So, if you two have had a disappointingly unfestive year, this was kind of the opportunity to save up your butter and sugar rations and make something a little bit special. By Christmas 1943, the Ministry of Food estimated that only one in 10 families would have a real turkey or a real goose on the Christmas table. So there were lots of mock versions. I did actually make a mock goose in my first Ration Book Recipes video. Um, so today I am going down the mock turkey route, which has about as much in common with a real turkey as the mock goose had with a real goose. Nothing. So this recipe, heads up, is basically stuffing, um, but I'm making it into a cute shape inspired by the BBC series Wartime Farm. Um, and also stuffing is objectively a better food than turkey, so I feel okay about it. So this calls for me to mix one pound or 450 grams of sausage meat. I'm obviously using vegan sausages that I'm just chopping up. A pound of breadcrumbs, two grated onions and two grated apples. I could hand grate onions, but then this video would just be like 45 minutes of me weeping to camera. So these are going in the food processor. If you would like to watch 45 minutes of me weeping to camera, don't give up hope. Maybe one day. I'm not sure why, um, but for some reason it did not register to me that this would be perhaps the size of a whole turkey. So I have now filled actually my two biggest mixing bowls um, and I am starting to feel <laughs> concerned. <laughs> and then adding in some chopped fresh sage, um, salt, pepper, dried sage would also be fine or like if you've got some thyme or whatever, as always do whatever you want. So this mixture is now going to be moulded into the shape of a turkey, which I'm sure is going to be very easy and successful. Um, but I do have parsnips. For an undisclosed reason. <laughs> Whoa! Ooh. Well, that's already turkey-esque. It's been a while since I've seen a turkey. Everyone loves it when I touch food for prolonged periods of times, right? That goes down very well traditionally. I think most most cooking programs maybe don't caress the food enough. Okay, I just need to I need to Google what a turkey is supposed to look like. I need this turkey to be anatomically convincing. The parsnips are going to be like little turkey legs that just scooch in the side. Okay, let me just more squishing. More squishing will certainly solve my food problems. So this then gets covered over with a whole pound of streaky bacon, which for context is the weekly rations of like four people. I live alone, I would not have the resources to acquire this much bacon, and like even in the modern day, that's a lot of money to spend on bacon. So I am cheaping out, I've got a couple of packets of vegan bacon. Um, this is not my favorite brand, but I think it is gonna work okay for this. I feel like it's a real self burn that I'm like, cheaper than real wartime housewives. To make up for this being much lower in fat than like real bacon, which would kind of base the turkey as it cooks, I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil over the top. And then the whole thing goes into roast at about 190 degrees C for an hour. I'm going to cover it in foil for most of this time and just take that off like 15 minutes towards the end so that the bacon can get some colour without burning. Mm. 
As a little half recipe to go alongside this, I am doing some fat-free roast potatoes according to Ministry of Food guidance. This is two pounds or 900 grams of peeled potatoes put into a roasting tin with a pint of water and a level dessert spoon of salt. There should be enough room for them to lie comfortably without touching and enough water to half fill the roasting tin. They're then gonna cook in a hot oven at about 220 degrees C for up to an hour and a half. The idea is basically that they're gonna boil at first and get really fluffy, and then as the water evaporates away, they'll bake and just get really like, golden and nice. It was between Christmas cake and Christmas pudding for this video, um, but the Christmas pudding needs to steam for like four hours, which is so many hours, I could be dead in four hours. If you have a range or an argo and you can just whack something in the simmering oven for all that time, be my guest. Like, drop me a comment, I will show you the recipe. Um, but otherwise, I'm going with a Christmas cake because this only cooks for like a, a, a two hours, which sounds very reasonable in comparison. I did do a trench cake for my first dinner in a dress video, um, and in that one I just refused to cook it for two hours on principle, so apparently I am less principled than I used to be. But also, that like, this is a, a real fruitcake, um, and it's probably a lot deeper. I don't know what this is meant to signify. <laughs> so I'm creaming together three ounces or 85 grams of sugar with four ounces or 112 grams of margarine, and one tablespoon of syrup. I'm using golden syrup, syrup of kings. To this, I'm adding eight ounces or 225 grams of plain flour, two tablespoons of baking powder, a pinch of salt, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and one of mixed spice. Very weird to modernize, it asks for two to four eggs, which I feel like there's a bit of a difference between two and four eggs. So I don't know what the logic is here, um, if it's different depending on whether you do fresh or dried. I'm splitting the difference and doing three eggs using a, a vegan powdered egg substitute. I always feel very validated using vegan substitutes in the Ration Book Recipes video because something like a powdered egg replacement is not just historically accurate, it's actually more historically accurate. This does not stop people from commenting to criticise me for veganising things, to which I say... Okay? A whole pound of mixed fruit is going in this baby. This recipe also calls for lemon substitute. Hang on. Lemon substitute. What is lemon substitute? You got me! Obviously it was very difficult to get your hands on real lemon during wartime, so it sounds as though this is a sort of powdered version? Or substitute, if you will. <laughs> I can find various references to it online, but nothing where anyone actually says what it's made of. So you can imagine my rage. If I had to guess, or if like I time traveled back to the 1940s and there were crowds of people around me demanding substitutes for lemon, I would probably say um, it's maybe a powdered citric acid or cream of tartar. But that guess is based on nothing. So maybe I would just say use a lemon or like a lemon extract or nothing. Finally, you can slosh in just enough milk or plant-based milk to make this a little softer in consistency. And then it's going in a seven inch tin and being baked in my old nemesis, the moderate oven. So that's about 180 degrees C or 350 Fahrenheit. Sit and stare at the wall in a fugue state for the next two hours and your cake will be cooked. Maybe. I hope, like, probably too cooked. <laughs> My fugue state was relatively short today, so while this is in the oven, I'm gonna make this mock marzipan to decorate it with. I actually found two recipes for mock marzipan, so obviously I picked the weirder one. Um, this has beans in it. If there had been one with potatoes in it, obviously I would have picked that. I'm never gonna do you out of potatoes. Um, this seems very weird at first, but I'm kind of justifying it in my head by being like, it's sort of like a shiroan, like a, a white bean paste used in Japanese sweets. Um, and when you put it like that, in my head it sounds okay. This recipe calls for you to soak haraka beans for 24 hours, which sounds too much like hard work, so I am using tinned ones. Okay, the first instruction is to rub this through a sieve, and I've done it for five seconds, and I've already decided that I don't want to do it. <laughs> it's going in the food processor. To that, I'm adding four tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of ground rice, a tablespoon of margarine, and a teaspoon of almond extract. 
Ground rice is not something that most people necessarily have in their kitchens nowadays. I am very dedicated to my bullshit, so I went out and bought some specially. Um, but I am 99% sure you could make a much improved version of this using ground almonds instead. Um, which would probably taste better, the texture might be better, I don't know. In my head it just feels like it sounds good. But ground almonds are more expensive, so swings and roundabouts. So here's how the Christmas cake is looking. Um, as you can see, it's kind of burnt on the top. Um, my own fault, I put it in the oven for two hours and I didn't think to like put some foil over the top of it. So that was obviously gonna happen. So put some foil over the top of it if you make this. Um, so I'm just gonna take a bread knife and cut off the like top centimeter. Um, and we're all gonna pretend that this didn't happen. I actually highly really like the mock turkey. I think if you're a stuffing fan, that's totally worth it. Um, if you just like making non-turkey foods into turkey shapes, also totally worth it. I think the potato technique has solid theory, like basically boiling slash steaming them for the first hour, but then I would drizzle some olive oil on for the last like half an hour or so, which is not the point of cooking potatoes without fat, but would make them better, so. Two reasons for that. I love fat and also I hate cleaning pans. It's overbaked, I knew it was. If only there had been some way to foresee this scenario. I think if it was baked for less long, the actual fruitcake... Oh, hang on. Now I have a problem. I hope I solve it. The marzipan is surprisingly good. Like, it doesn't taste like marzipan and it is quite a lot softer. So I would probably put, like, a fondant over the top of it. Um, but I'm kind of into it. So oh, there we go. I'm going to call that three and a half recipes, possibly two and two half recipes. Don't say I never do anything for you. As always, let me know if you try any of these and if you've enjoyed them. Take a look at my other ration book recipes video or some of the dinner and address ones if you're interested in historical cooking. And thank you for watching. In case you were after a last minute decorating tip for the Ministry of Food, they suggest that if you can't decorate with bowls of brightly coloured fruit, worry not, just decorate with vegetables. Put a beetroot in the middle of the table. Merry Christmas, you're welcome.